Okay. Um, you know, um, we got virtual reality and we got augmented reality. Um, augmented reality, I can see the value for it pretty much is going to be in the area expertise um, of showing us where things are in the world. Um, I think that's mainly going to be its biggest value. Um, they're trying to create um, augmented reality video games. It's more, I think it's more just that just to show them, just to show people how they can exploit what they know about your space. Now, I'm wondering why these idiots don't use this technology to create 3D copies of the world. Like, why aren't they going down and getting all of the famous architecture of Gaudi and putting it into a 3D space like Alt-VR so that people will have richer architectural experiences rather than forcing people to create their own 3D worlds. I mean, people will create their own 3D worlds, but they'll do it really badly. It won't look fantastic. And um, it's okay, you know, it's okay to have the people who create those 3D worlds. Um, they're going to be doing as most guys do is create an entire 3D world from basic um, 3D primitives. That isn't the most efficient way to do things because you have a tendency to create a lot of polygons whenever you're working with primitives such as spheres and, and cylinders and things like that, you know. Um, it's not like working with Legos. Um, it could be more efficient, for instance, whenever you create um, a set of objects with um, cylinders and spheres, you could perform Boolean operations on those um, 3D objects, and that would be a, a way of reducing the polygon count because your polygon count is going to determine whether you have mobile um, 3D graphic um, compatibility, mobile um, compatibility. And so they need to, be, to have things in place to reduce the polygon count by doing Boolean operations on primitives that people use to create worlds. Um, but they, but Microsoft, you guys, um, you're not really doing shit, you know? Um, you guys need to be out there getting all of the major architectural works and putting them into alt space. Um, you need to be going out there and getting historical um, museums and things like that and putting those in alt space. You're doing, not doing shit. All you're doing is you're leaving it up to the community to try to create um, content for alt space. Um, I mean, I, it's a joke, okay, what you guys are doing. Alt space is fantastic, but uh, they could benefit from your understanding of how to do things with uh, 3D content. Because um, Lord knows Microsoft's been in the business long enough to do some quality 3D experiences. Um, you guys stole your 3D technology from SGI. Hey, I know your whole story. I can tell you how Microsoft came about um, coming up with um, DirectX and, and all this technology. It's what Microsoft always does. They never create um, technology themselves. They steal it from other people or they buy it up. If they can't buy it up, they steal it. And that's what they did with SGI. Rather than, um, rather than supporting the OpenGL standard, which SGI wanted people to do, um, Microsoft instead recreated it internally as the ActiveX technology for, or, you know, doing their, uh, what was it, their DirectX 3D technology. And um, it's, it's DirectX. But um, internally, 
um, all that matters to Microsoft is it's not, they never support standards. What they do is they get people dependent on themselves. It's, this is the way it is. Um, Microsoft prefers people to be on their platform. If they're going, if anybody's going to create standards, they're going to do it inside the realm of Microsoft. It's just like Walmart. Um, if you're going to be selling something, the Walmart prefers it to be within the realm of Walmart. This is the way every corporation is. Um, this is where capitalism falls down. Capitalism uh, tends to produce monopolies when at its worst, it produces monopolies. And Microsoft is this way. Um, I don't mind Microsoft researching augmented reality technologies. I don't mind them buying up alt space. Um, I just can see somewhere down the road we're going to pay for it because what Microsoft does is they will leverage these technologies to make money. It's just how they work. Um, it's the nature of the beast. Um, it says in the Bible, um, if a man produces bad fruits, it must be a bad man. It goes the other way. A, a bad man will always produce bad fruits. Um, they don't produce good fruits. A good man produces good fruits. Uh, Microsoft is great at marketing. They're great at telling everybody that they really are better. Uh, what they say are wonderful, fantastic words like Trump. Trump is really good at this. This is what Trump does. He is really good at marketing or about advertising who he is. He, but the reality is the guy is a shithole and he creates shit. That's what Trump does. He's really good at marketing and advertising his message. He is not good at proving to the world that he is actually good, which he is not. He's never been good. Okay. Uh, Microsoft is kind of the same way. The only reason why Microsoft even exists is because Gary Kildall decided that he was not going to, um, that he wouldn't give the time of day to IBM. His wife wouldn't give the, uh, the time of day to IBM. Uh, they figured that their technology was above IBM and our CPM, and they lost out to somebody else who was lesser than them, which was Microsoft, all Microsoft had was basic. Um, they were not known for creating an operating system. So the only reason they got an operating system is because a guy across town had uh, a flavor of something like CPM. He looked at CPM and said, I can create something with the interface of CPM um, and that's that's how he created that technology. It's a funny thing. It's funny how history goes about. Um, in the open source, we had a technology called Wine. You know what Wine is? It's not an emulator. That's what it stands for. Wine is not an emulator. You know what it does? It basically implements the Windows API to all of the uh, the application programmer's interface. It program it basically. Um, makes the applications think that it's running, that they're running on Windows, when in fact what they're running on is Linux or on Macintosh. Um, it basically translates what Microsoft has, it, it translates their language for their operating system into the language of competitive operating systems. That's what Wine does, it does it fairly well. It does it more for video games because um, it's easier to, to um, well, video games just use a subset of what's in the, the Microsoft operating system. They don't use the full set of language of, um, of the API. And Wine will only come to support everything that is in the Windows API as more open source developers come involved with wine. Uh, eventually it'll be to the point where um, they will have everything of the API inside of um, wine. And if it's not in wine, I mean, if there's nothing in the operating system that supports what is in, what is in Windows, 
they will implement it into wine and it will be a part of wine. So wine is basically trying to be windows by but not being windows and that windows is a fairly bad operating system. It's Microsoft is not very, they're very good at selling it. They're not very good at proving it, you know. Um, they're, they're always going to take existing technologies and try to make them their own. And uh, they try to do it with DirectX. They, they succeeded with DirectX. Um, um, it's, you know, video games pulled it through. But SGI were the original creators of this technology, this 3D technology. They didn't support the standard because they don't like competitors. They don't want to, uh, companies in general will not uh, implement technologies on open standards because they don't want to compete with others. They don't want to work on this level playing field. They want to have um, a leg up on everybody else. Um, when Microsoft gets involved in any standards committee, which they should never be, um, they will veer the standards in their favor. That's what they do. Um, they don't put um, vision. They don't put people who are um, who are implementers on standards boards. They put evangelists. They put sales evangelists, and the sales evangelists will always try to encourage the people on the standards committees to implement their technologies in favor of Microsoft. Now I'm only here at Allspace to keep Microsoft in check. And if they do anything to Allspace to fuck it up, I will fuck them up severely in some way or another by creating video content that reveals to people who they are, okay, at every step of the way. I will figure out ways to back, to get people back onto the open source platform, okay. Open source, it is not fantastic, but it's just as good as Microsoft, okay. Because all Microsofts is just change language every time, they don't really create new technologies half the time they don't create anything new they're just taking ex what exists and and reselling it um the i if you screw with us we'll screw with you that's what open source is about it's about bringing the best technologies to everybody okay all right and enforcing standards or enforcing open standards if you won't enforce an open standard we will make you do that microsoft we will make you do that and to all the creditors that, that support uh, microsoft and buy microsoft and all other corporations fear me <laughs>